Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Katusa Sergeant Choi Minyong. Even though your MLS does not directly take you to the field, you should always be prepared as a soldier. Leaders of division show their creed at Camp Casey. In the early freezing morning, commanders and staff of 2nd Infantry Division gather at the Camp Hovey Gym to conduct the warrior leader's crucible. For one leader from 3-2 General Support Aviation Brigade, this is not usually in his job description. It's a uh, about once a year opportunity for the command teams, division staff, and the uh, uh, commanding general and his uh, team to get together and uh, practice for real uh, our focus on the fundamentals. And what specific fundamentals did Lieutenant Colonel Cole brush up on? So there's 10 level soldier tasks, everything from evaluating a casualty, calling a nine line, land nav, weapon skills, PT, etc. As long as, as, as well as a little team building and camaraderie, uh, all wrapped into one. His teammate for the day is confident in Lieutenant Colonel Cole's ability as a leader. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Cole, he's been here for about a year and a half in Korea. A uh, great battalion commander. Uh, he works uh, really hard in the GSAB. Hard, hard working individual. <laughs> and how exactly is Lieutenant Colonel Cole going to get them both through the crucible? He is a PT stud. So he's going to pick up the slack for me. Okay. <laughs> Staying mentally and physically fit is in every soldier's job description, and with this in mind, Lieutenant Colonel Cole completes the crucible with no problem. Specialist Rod Evans, Camp Casey, Korea. In the award ceremony, Division Commanding General Vandal announced the worst teams as well as the best three teams of each event. Things stay heavy at this shop at Osan Air Base, and that's just the way they like it. Airmen from the Metals Technology Shop at Osan Air Base know that getting up close and personal with machines and material is the only way to get things done. We are uh, welders and machinists. We love working with our hands. Is five inch Fashioning thick. custom designed aircraft parts from raw metal is a tedious process. Senior Airman Jay Waters combines past, hands-on experience with military training to make sure every part he makes is the best possible. I used to be a carpenter by trade, um, me and my father both, and I wanted to do something else. I wanted to be a part of something bigger. Working with parts to construct the military's planes, he's learned that shaping metal is a delicate balance between applied science and artistry. There's speeds and speeds that give you a more desirable look and feel to the part. It also helps the integrity, structural integrity of the part. If you get the perfect speed and speed, it looks beautiful. It makes you real proud. Whatever the job, Senior Airman Waters knows the way to stay. Just focused on doing my best every day. Senior Airman Robert Mason, Osan Air Base, Korea. Metals Technology turns blocks of metal into high quality aircraft parts. It's not rare for service members to teach, learn, or share capabilities with host country local nationals whenever overseas. Staff Sergeant Zach Lopez takes us to South Korea where that's happening. The Chonbuk Fire Headquarters has coordinated a very thorough multi-agency mass casualty anti-terrorist exercise in Gunsan City, South Korea. Mr. Kim Young Sum, the battalion chief of fire safety and prevention, explains the objective. Today's joint exercise is to see how multiple agencies cooperate together to mitigate terrorist attack on the petroleum, oil and lubricant storage unit located in Gunsan City. The exercise involves over 26 different agencies, 500 emergency responders and 39 specialized vehicles. This year we are conducting multi-phase events to see cooperation between government agencies to military organizations to include U.S. Air Force fire Department is this is the first year service members have participated in this annual exercise. It's good to work with firefighters from the Gunsan Air Base. It is good to know we can mitigate the emergencies together without any issues. They have brought special capabilities that we do not have. But it's good to know they can learn from us as we can learn from them and the bonds will strengthen as time goes on. Staff Sergeant Zach Lopez, 
Gunsan City, South Korea. Firefighters stationed at Kunsan Air Base are continuing to exercise with their Korean counterparts. Being present during a moment of history doesn't happen often. Airman First Class David Nostein takes us to witness history in the making. The 8th Army Commanding General, Lieutenant General Bernard Shampo, and the Republic of Korea Army Commanding General, General Kim Hyun Jip, come together to sign the Combined Division Memorandum of Agreement the first in six decades of ROC and U.S. alliance. Place the first signature on their respective IMOA. The goal for the two nations' alliance initiatives is to build adaptive capabilities to deter and defeat future provocations and win on the peninsula should deterrence fail. The Republic of Korea and United States Combined Division is continuously reviewing ways to enhance our combined defense posture. Airman First Class Devin Notstein, Youngsan, Korea. The combined division will be led by a U.S. commander and a ROC deputy commander. It's not common to see a Korean citizen in the U.S. Army as a musician. Katusa Sergeant Chang Won Ho joins a sergeant who fits the bill. I play the piano for the concert band and the jazz combo small group. Our name is Pacific Group. I was born, raised, and educated in Seoul, Korea. I had a successful career as an international student recruiter. And then I got married, so I moved to the States with, with my husband, who was military. I thought I would do just fine because I was working with the American schools for almost five, seven years, but actually it wasn't because I don't have any vet education background in the States. I joined the Army because I couldn't get a job as an Army spouse. When I just got out of basic training, people were telling me, thanks for serving. So that kind of respect that I could get, I couldn't get before. Sergeant Riggs is a utility player. She can do a lot of things. Um, she can take a solo role, she can go out and be out front and, and play by herself, but she can also take a, a supporting role and let someone else be in the spotlight. So she's, she's that kind of team player. I actually didn't realize how comforting it was until I went to basic training. I wasn't allowed to play any music. I wanted to play these pieces that I haven't played for a long time. I guess it's in me. I, I need it in my life. Sergeant Riggs is also the operations NCO for the 8th Army Band. Winter's almost here and it's time to think about how to combat the cold. PFC Kim tells us more about staying warm in Dongducheon. Members of the Gyeonggi Provincial Office, Dongducheon City Hall and 2nd Infantry Division participated in a call delivery to make sure the locals would stay warm this winter. Today's event is basically a group of us uh, volunteered to come out and uh, help distribute coal uh, to uh, people around the area. More than 5,000 charcoal blocks were handed out to impoverished households in Dongducheon. It's just one big group effort that is going very well. I'm just happy, whenever I'm doing the volunteer work, I'm just happy to know that I'm being able to help some other people. As long as I'm able to help out, I'm happy about it. This type of charity helps the neighborhoods in Gyeonggi province during the winter and builds a stronger alliance between the soldiers of 2nd Infantry Division and the local community. Mayor Oh, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity for our soldiers to continue to develop this bond and relationship that's existed together for 64 years now. And we look forward to uh, helping in any way that we possibly can um, the citizens of Dongachan and the citizens of the Republic of Korea. Come Samnida. Katusa Private, Kim Sang-yup, Camp Casey, Korea. The charcoal was donated by the Gyeonggi Provincial Office, Dongducheon City Hall, and 2ID Commanding General, Major General Thomas Vandal. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, December 11th. To see these stories and others, go to the AFN Pacific website or view them through the AFN Pacific app. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening.